extinction. Three species every hour are disappearing from the face of the earth. That includes plants, animals, insects, uh, fish. I mean, you name it. Things are disappearing all over the world. These things will never reappear. They're gone for good. That's what extinction means. The species has died off. Sockeye salmon, which in the 1990s in the Fraser River of British Columbia, during one particular run, numbered more than 20 million. This year have been reduced to 600,000, in effect closing all the fisheries for that fish in the river system. Now imagine this, native fishermen are no longer able to catch their food source, nor are commercial fishermen, but there's a bigger picture unfolding, a bigger environmental impact. Think about the salmon that make it up the river to spawn and all the things in the ecosystem that depend on it bears that feed on it to fatten up for the winter so they can hibernate the long Canadian winters. Salmon are the food source for eagles. So many things depend on them. They're going away. This last week on the news it was reported there's a, a movie that has come out. It's called The Cove. It documents how in Japan there's a cove just outside of Osaka and in that in Taji the fishermen herd dolphins by the thousands into this cove and it starts in September and will be going on until March and slaughtered dolphins now can you imagine a video from that existed there would be an outcry but it doesn't exist not generally speaking there's a movie about it but generally speaking it's a hidden secret it's a secret of what man is doing to the oceans just like we've seen that sharks by the millions are being slaughtered they are being caught in nets on long lines. Fins are chopped off and the sharks are thrown back into the water, sometimes while they're still alive. Is that humanity? Is that how we plan to live on forever? Amphibians. This was also last week on television. Amphibians. We're going to be losing about half the amphibians the planet has right now. They are a barometer for mankind because amphibians, like frogs, absorb pollutants, insecticides, all sorts of things through their skin. They're disappearing. I mean, in the report they were saying that scientists in the jungles of Panama would go out in the morning, catch frogs, they could hear them. The next day they would go out into the jungle and they'd be all gone, dead. They'd be on their backs, turned up. These are beautiful yellow frogs, blue frogs. But it's not just about the jungles of Panama. In British Columbia, in the lower mainland, there are frogs that have the same fungus infection and are now down to being found only in three ponds. It is happening the world over. Is anybody paying attention? Does anybody care? Why is there not a bigger outcry to save our species? Because this planet, we can't replenish these. And many of the species now, like these frogs, have been gathered up and put into these little Noah Ark type research facilities to try and preserve the species. and. It's a struggle. I mean, can you imagine that in maybe 20, 30 years, how many species will only e exist in man-made habitats? Not in the wild, but in man-made habitats. The alarm bells are sounding. It is an alarmist uh, time right now. You've got to be concerned because you don't want to see a, a world for the next generation or the generation thereafter where elephants, lions, tigers, uh, Moose, bear will only exist in zoos and in game farms. They're gone from the wild because our wild is built around ecosystem and when you start taking things out of it, it affects a whole chain of other living organisms. Many species of caiman, alligators, crocodiles are on the verge of extinction. Some, there's less than a thousand of them in the wild. Look into the eyes of these animals and tell them that they're no longer needed by man, that we don't need them. It has been predicted now that mankind will exceed 7 billion on the planet in 2011 7 billion people that means more need for food more need for space more need for water all these different needs 
will put a bigger burden on the living creatures that also inhabit the earth with us. And we have to be aware and we have to be very focused on how to save them. A sky without an eagle soaring above will be missed by generations to come. And think about it, like the salmon. What an important food source the salmon is for these great eagles. Without salmon, even the, it's just a tragedy unfolding. In the oceans, the reefs are dying off and it's predicted that half the reefs will be gone in the next 10 to 20 years. They're being washed basically white by it, they look like they've been bleached, but what is happening is that the temperatures are going up and the living organism, which is coral, is dying off. That will also have an effect on oceans because the coral and all these living organisms keep the ocean clean. So can you imagine more algae blooms and stuff like that happening where you can't eat the uh, ocean creatures? which won't be around anyway because we overfish we're killing and polluting the oceans it's time to get alarmist now this is not about what will or could happen it is happening right now i filmed a lot of hummingbirds in the last two years and i worry about those little creatures because anything along their migration route could harm them and uh, literally reduce their populations by half. It's so easy, whether it's a bird flu or a pesticide or anything that can harm these little creatures. We live in the Okanagan and even here the signs of the developments are all around us. There's a lot of agriculture taking place. We're sucking water out of the precious reservoirs because most of this land, especially as you head south Okanagan, was desert. So what we're doing is we're irrigating desert. Now, again, you don't have to be a rocket scientist to see the results of this. See what's happened in California, in Nevada, Arizona, in places where they have turned the desert into agricultural land. They're using more and more water, and the water is a precious resort. What's going to happen? How is this going to be sustained? And also, think about it, that when you're spraying all this agricultural uh, growth, which is orchards and vegetables and everything like that with water, that water washes the pesticides off that are on these plants and goes back into the ground and back into the groundwater. Again, I've seen it from California, man. You know, the ditches that are filled with slimy water where nothing is existing. We keep doing things like that without learning. Cindy and I came across this uh, great basin gopher snake in an area that is going to be flooded. In effect, wiping out the range of this snake. It's only a snake. I mean, really, do people really care about snakes? But they are a part of the ecosystem. And there's so precious few places for them. They are protected in British Columbia. So precious few places that they can exist. And they're going to be gone one day. I've talked about it. it. Talking isn't doing it. We have to keep being aware. I hope you're aware. I hope you're going to do something. It takes one person at a time. We all have to be involved in saving the species of the planet or else it will be our turn. And I'm not talking about us now, but maybe our next generation or the generation thereafter. Thank you.